What is going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I've got an absolute belter for you because I'm going to be talking about the top 8 things that gamers just don't do anymore. So get ready to be hit with all that nostalgia from back in the day. It's got everything in this one. This one is probably the biggest project I've ever had to do in my life. So yeah, let me know what you think of this one down below. Don't forget to leave a like, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. But let's jump into it right now. So do you remember the days of the original Nintendo and the Super Nintendo when games just wouldn't load? So you'd take out your cartridge and blow on it? It was almost a ritual. We all had our own technique as well, a gentle puff or a full force blow, or even using a piece of cloth to wipe the contacts. You'd slide the cartridge back into the console and literally cross your fingers and just hope that the screen would finally show your game instead of a blank or glitchy mess. The funny thing is, it didn't really help. The real issue was often due to dust or poor contact between the cartridge and the console. And while blowing on it might have seemed to have fixed this sometimes, it was mostly just luck. But still, everyone did it. And most of us still talk about it to this day. With today's digital downloads and discs, blowing on cartridges has now become a thing of the past. We don't have to worry about those dirty contacts or a game not loading because of a bit of dust. It's all about instant access and smooth loading times now. But for those of us who grew up with them old school consoles, there's a certain nostalgia to the ritual of blowing on cartridges that even to this day we still can't stop talking about. Back in the day save points were strategically placed throughout the game. These save points were often few and far between and reaching one felt like a major milestone. You'd breathe a sigh of relief when you finally found that glowing beacon or special room where you could save your progress. Missing a save point could mean losing hours of gameplay and the anxiety of making it to that next one without dying was real. Nowadays we have auto save and cloud saving which are undoubtedly blessings. Auto save ensures that your progress is saved at regular intervals and cloud saving means your data is safe even if your console crashes or breaks entirely. You can pick up right where you left off without any hassle doing it this way. It's a massive convenience and allows for more relaxed gaming sessions knowing that your hard earned progress is secure. However this also means the anxiety of finding that next save point has become a thing of the past. That particular form of tension, that desperate race to save your game before something went wrong, that is no longer a part of the gaming experience. Modern games often also save after every significant event, checkpoints or even at regular time intervals, ensuring that you rarely, if ever, lose progress. While it's great for accessibility and convenience, some might argue that the content constant safety net of autosave can make games feel a little less challenging. The sense of triumph from reaching the save point after a tough section is something unique to older games. It taught patience, careful planning and the importance of preparation. So while autosave and cloud saves have made gaming more convenient, they have also challenged the way we experience the journey from start to finish. Do you remember when games came with actual paper maps? It was like getting a treasure map, and for many of us, it added an extra layer of excitement to the unboxing experience. Games like Grand Theft Auto and the Elder Scrolls like Oblivion and Skyrim would include these detailed fold-out maps that you could spread out across your table or floor. These maps weren't just helpful, they were works of art filled with intricate detail, vibrant colours and the locations you needed to explore. Unfolding the map for the first time felt like embarking on a real adventure. You'd study it, planning your next move, marking places of interest, even bragging to your friends about the secrets you've discovered. The maps provided a tangible connection to the game world, something you could hold and examine while plotting your in-game strategy. In some cases these maps even contained hidden clues or easter eggs that weren't immediately apparent, adding another layer of depth to your exploration. With today's in-game maps and GPS features, physical maps have become a nostalgic memory. Modern games integrate maps directly into the user interface, accessible with a quick button press. These digital maps are dynamic, updating in real time, and often come with handy features like quest markers, waypoints, and even fast travel options. They make navigation more efficient and ensure you never get lost, allowing for a smoother gaming experience. Today, those paper maps are collector's items, cherished by those who remember the joy they brought. They represent a time when gaming was not just a digital experience, but a physical one as well. So while we traded in our old fold-out maps for high-tech GPS systems, the nostalgia of those paper maps remain a cherished memory for many gamers.
Before the internet was filled with walkthroughs and YouTube tutorials, gamers relied on printed game guides to help them navigate through the toughest challenges and uncover hidden secrets. These guides were more than just instruction manuals, they were meticulously crafted companions filled with detailed maps, strategies and tips to enhance the gaming experience. Imagine flipping through the glossy pages of a game guide, each section beautifully illustrated with screenshots and artwork from the game itself. It was like holding a piece of the game world in your hands. And for many players, these guides became essential companions to their gaming journeys. Whether you were stuck on a particularly challenging boss battle or searching for the elusive collectibles, the game guide was there to provide guidance and support. However, with the progression of the internet, printed game guides have now become increasingly rare. A quick Google search now provides instant access to walkthroughs, FAQs and video tutorials, rendering traditional game guides somewhat obsolete. While this accessibility has undoubtedly made gaming more convenient, it's also led to the loss of a tactile experience that comes with flipping through the pages of a physical guide. Despite their diminishing popularity, printed game guides hold a special place in the heart of many gamers even to this day. They represent an era where gaming was more of an analogue experience, and discovering the secrets of that game required a combination of skill, perseverance and a trusty game guide by your side. Today, these guides are cherished by collectors. They are literally the reminders of a time when the journey was just as important as the destination. Oh my days, the era of multi-disc games. A time when a journey through a game was just so epic that it couldn't be contained on the one single disc. Games like Final Fantasy 7, 8 and 9 and Metal Gear Solid were sprawling adventures that just spanned multiple discs. Each one housed in a different chapter to the story and there was something undeniably special about reaching the end of the one disc and just waiting to see what awaited you in the next. There was also other games like Resident Evil 2 which although were on separate discs they contained the same storyline but seen from a different perspective. Where in disc 1 you play as Leon Scott Kennedy and then in the second one you play as Claire Redfield. Same story but different perspectives. Now of course, swapping discs wasn't always convenient. It could interrupt the flow of gameplay, forcing you to pause and take a break while you made the switch. And there was always the risk of scratching or damaging the disc if you weren't careful. But for many of us, these were minor inconveniences and were a small price to pay for the sheer magnitude of the experience as a whole. Now, if you fast forward to today, the landscape of gaming has undergone a significant evolution. With the introduction of like digital downloads, the need for multi-disc games has largely become a thing of the past. With digital downloads, you can purchase and download the games directly to your console or PC, bypassing the the need for discs entirely. This not only streamlines the gaming experience but also eliminates the risk of disc damage and the hassle of swapping discs mid-game. And as a result, the days of swapping discs mid-game has become a nostalgic memory for the most part, remembered fondly by those who experienced it but largely unknown to the newer generations of gamers. While there's something undeniably charming about the ritual of swapping discs, the convenience and efficiency of modern gaming media have made it another one of them things that will be missed by so many gamers. Okay, now we're getting really nostalgic. Memory cards. In my opinion, these are the heroes of gaming in the 90s and the early 2000s. If you were a gamer during this time, chances are you have fond memories of these small plastic rectangles that held all your progress, achievements, and cherished memories. Whether it was the iconic PlayStation memory card or the memory cards for consoles like the GameCube and PlayStation 2, these little devices were absolutely essential for preserving where you were up to in that game. Each memory card had a limited amount of space as well, usually measured in like kilobytes or megabytes, which meant you had to manage your saves carefully to avoid running out of space. It was like a digital diary of your gaming adventures with each save file representing a chapter in your gaming journey. But memory cards back in the day were more than just storage devices, they were also a form of personal expression. Memory cards came in different colours and designs, allowing gamers to choose one that reflected their personality or their favourite game. And let's not forget the joy of swapping memory cards with your friends so you could share them save files so you could also have that golden chocobo and knight it around in your inventory too. Don't act like that was just me, I know you guys did it as well. Anyway, with modern gaming consoles having built-in hard drives and cloud saves, memory cards have become somewhat of a relic to the past. Today's consoles offer significantly more storage space, allowing gamers to save hundreds of games and thousands of hours of gameplay without ever needing to worry about running out of space. And with cloud saves, your progress is automatically backed up to the cloud, ensuring that you never lose your saves, even if your console is lost, damaged or stolen. As a result, memory cards have faded into obscurity remembered fondly by those who grew up with them, but largely unknown to younger generations of gamers. They're a nostalgic reminder of a time in gaming when saving your progress meant carefully managing your limited storage space. While modern gaming has made saving and storing progress more convenient, there's something special about the connection memory cards provide to our gaming memories.
Oh my days, this one just keeps getting better and better. Demo discs. Do you actually remember getting a demo disc? These discs were often bundled with like gaming magazines or new consoles and offered a glimpse into the gaming experiences that awaited us. They were in short, amazing. Packed with short playable segments that let you try out the latest titles before they were released. It was a great way to discover new games and decide what you wanted to buy next. Each demo disc was a selection of upcoming hits, often featuring the most anticipated games of the season. The anticipation of popping in a demo disc and exploring the latest offerings from your favourite developers was an amazing experience. You'd insert the disc and dive into a collection of previews that transported you to new worlds and exciting new adventures. The demo disc experience was more than just playing snippets of games, it was a full on discovery process. You play through levels of different games, sometimes ones you hadn't even heard of. The disc might include a mix of genres from action packed shooters to immersive RPGs and quirky indie games. This variety exposed gamers to a wider range of titles that they might not have encountered otherwise. Nowadays, digital demos and early access programs have replaced demo discs. While it's incredibly convenient to download a demo directly to your console or PC, receiving a physical disc and exploring its content is something we don't see much anymore. There's a certain nostalgia associated with these demo discs, a reminder of how we used to discover new games in a pre-digital era. So while the convenience of digital demos is undeniable, there's a special place in our hearts for those demo discs that brought a touch of magic. They represent a time when gaming was a bit more hands-on and every disc was a gateway to new adventures. The secret source of gaming in the 80s, 90s and early 2000s. If you were a gamer during this golden age, chances are you have fond memories of entering these combination of buttons and inputs that unlock special abilities, infinite lives or secret characters. Whether you discovered them in a gaming magazine, swapped them with friends on the playground, or stumbled upon them by accident, cheat codes were a staple of gaming culture back in the day. Back then, cheat codes were more than just shortcuts or ways to make the game easier. They were a form of experimentation. Every game seemed to have its own set of hidden codes waiting to be discovered, and finding them felt like uncovering buried treasure. Whether it was the famous Konami code or other codes that unlock secret characters and levels within the game itself, cheat codes added an extra layer of depth and replay value to our favourite games. But perhaps the most iconic aspect of cheat codes was their ability to level the playing field. Whether you were struggling to beat a particularly tough boss or just wanted to goof around and wreak havoc in the game world, cheat codes gave the players the power to bend rules. It was like having a secret arsenal of superpowers at your disposal, turning even the most daunting challenges into a walk in the park. However, these days, cheat codes have largely fallen by the wayside. Today's games are more likely to offer additional content and unlockables through paid DLC packs or in-game purchases, rather than hidden codes and secrets. While this has opened up new revenue streams for the developers and publishers, it's also changed the way we interact with games. Instead of searching for cheat codes and unlocking secrets through experimentation, players are encouraged to spend their hard-earned money on additional content and upgrades. No While way, this can man. be convenient for those who are willing to pay, it it also raises questions about fairness and accessibility in gaming. After all, not everyone has the means or willingness to spend extra cash for in-game items and bonuses. Cheat codes these days are remembered fondly by those who grew up with them, and while the landscape of gaming may have changed, the spirit of exploration and experimentation that cheat codes embody still lives on in the hearts of gamers everywhere. So there you have it, the top 8 things that gamers just don't do anymore. This one took me a little while to make, but I'm glad it's done now, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Let me know down below what you think, and don't forget to leave a like, don't forget to subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.